everybody. This is Professor Dan at the University of Colorado. Um, and what I love to do is uh, go over some example problems. Um, so we're going to be doing some rigid body equilibrium. And to solve these problems, what you need to do is you draw a free body diagram. Then you do some analysis with your equations of motion, or in this case, uh, equation of motion equaling zero. And we get some answers. So let's practice this together. All right, so free body diagram with resultant load. All right, what does that mean? Well, free body diagram, what we've talked about is the acronym BFAD. So body, axis, forces, angles, and dimensions. And that keeps us out of trouble. Remember, a free body diagram is everything we need to solve a problem right in front of us. So let's just do it together. So we draw our body. There we go. We draw our axis, x, y. We draw our forces. All right, so we have a normal force, call it bn. We have a pin reaction, we'll call it ay and ax. We have our moment, so forces are moment. So that's Newton meters. And our resultant force X with a force, this distributive force, we know that the area gives us the force. So that's one half base 1.5 meters times height, 80 Newton meters or 80 Newtons per meter. Meters cancel and we get 60 Newtons. So draw that on. And so where does that act? Well, we know for a triangle, it acts a third of the way through from the heavy end. So it acts right about there. And so one third of 1.5 meters is 0 0.5 meters. Cool, so we know that that's 0 0.5 meters. We know that that's one meter, and we know that this is, let's say, 0.75. All right, so now we need angles. All right, so our angle, this is what students most of the time do wrong. If we know that that's 30 degrees, so our inverse angle theorem says that that's 30 degrees, which means that this angle here, the important one, if we're going to break up BN into X and Y components, is 60 degrees. Um, there we go. So that's our free body diagram. We can actually make it a little easier to see. Put a little meter there. Um, do we have a body? Yep. Do we have axis? Sure. Forces, angles, and dimensions. All right. So next problem. Question is, we have reactions at D and G. Do they have components in the X direction? And the answer to this is actually true. And so how do we solve this problem? Well, we can draw the overall free body diagram, solve our equations, and we'll see that the reactions at D and G both have X components. They really do, and we know this by doing that analysis. So let's go a little slower and do that analysis together. So we know P is 106, A is 3.9 feet, and B is 2.6 feet. So first step, buffad. So body, axis, forces, Angles, not a lot of angles there. And dimensions, B, so that's 2.6. That's 2.6 plus 3.9. That's 3.9. 3.9, 2.6, and 2.6. All right, so now, some of the forces in the X direction. That's dx plus gx equals zero. So dx equals minus gx, which means that, yeah, they just oppose each other. All right, some of the forces in the y equal p minus p plus dy 
which is positive as shown, plus gy is equal to zero. But now let's go a little slower. What do we know about fg? Well, fg is a two-force member, and therefore its forces act only in the x direction. Wait a minute, really? How do we know that? Well, remember, if something's not moving, it's not moving anywhere, and we can actually section it. So if we just take fg, and we say that there's a gy, take the sum of the moments about f. That's equal to positive gy times b. And if that were the case, there would be rotation about point f. Since there's not rotation, we know gy is equal to zero. So that is how a two-force member can help us develop a solution. All right, so now the moment about, let's take point B. All right, so the moment about B, we have P. We put our fingers in the direction of P, our palm facing B. We see P times 2.6 plus, and then we see DX, and then the distance DX influences is 3 dx times 3.9 plus 2.6 and then let's see dy goes right through b so i drew it offset a little bit but it goes right through b so it's got no perpendicular perpendicular distance we know gy is zero and we know gx is also equal to or the moment due to gx is also equal to zero because it goes right through b. So we know p plus minus, so dx, its influence, its moment about point b is negative times its perpendicular distance, which is 3.9 plus 2.6. That is equal to zero. So p times 2.6 is equal to dx times 3.9 plus 2.6. So, oops, did I make a mistake? Nope, I didn't. So dx is equal to p times 2.6 divided by 3.9 plus 2.6. And we know p is 106 pounds because it's given to us. So dx is 42.4. Uh, pounds, not newtons, pounds. So we know dx is equal to minus gx. Therefore, gx is equal to minus 42.4 pounds. And we actually know from some of the forces in the y direction, minus p plus dy is equal to zero. So dy is equal to 106 pounds. All right, so let's see. We got dy, 106 pounds. dx is 42.4 pounds. And gx is going not to the right, but to the left because we said it was minus 42.4 pounds. All right. So one last one. It says the table is held up by four ropes, which pass through frictionless pulleys and are attached to the buckets. Each bucket is resting on the table. It says, hint, draw a free body diagram for one bucket. And it says the tension in each rope is greater than the weight of each bucket, equal to the weight of each bucket, or less than the weight of each bucket. So draw our free body diagram. There's our bucket. We have our tension going up, our weight going down, and our normal force going up, the force of the table. Sum of the forces in the Y equals tension minus W plus the normal force. Do some algebra, tension equals weight minus the normal force. So tension is less than the weight. How do we know that? Well, plug in a number. So let's just say weight is 10, normal force is two. Tension is gonna be eight if the weight is two. So we know tension is less than W. So the answer is C, the tension is less than the weight. Um, well, I hope that that helped. I hope that your studying is going well, and I'll see you in the next video. All right, have a good one.